Father, we just enter into your presence. We thank you that there is an open heaven right now. I thank you that there are signs, wonders, and miracles today. Let the sick be healed. Let bondages be broken off. Let there be a manifestation. Holy Spirit, have your way. We thank you that when we leave, we'll be like the psalmist who said, wasn't it good to be in the house of the Lord? For it is in your presence that things are transformed and changed. I thank you for this wonderful, sacred ministry that you've set apart. This holy. We stand on your holy ground. We honor you with great expectation that you're going to do something so supernatural. Because you are God. And you're looking for a life. To transform, to stand in the gap, to make up the edge, and to bring forth your glory in the earth. So thank you. Let angels show up. Do what only you can do in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Turn around, hug somebody, say I love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. Get out of your seat, hug at least seven people. Just let them know how much you love them, how much you appreciate them. Let them know that God is good all the time. It's great to be at the Miracle Center. We're excited to have you. So we're great to see you and uh, to be here. We got to spend a wonderful morning with Pastor Skunawan and his beautiful wife and Minister Greg and everyone. Will you let your pastors know you are very, very, very blessed people. You have two of the greatest pastors. They are leaders. They are visionaries. Put your hands together for the man of God. Come on, the woman of God. He's a great man of faith. I was just writing my scriptures out and going, and I could feel just a gift of faith. I'm so blessed to have my husband here uh, today, and this is Minister Jonathan Kane. Many of you uh, might know him, might not from, he's similar to your pastor. He loves to serve Jesus Christ. He's just written uh, his latest book, Don't Stop Believing. He's released two CDs, What God Wants to Hear, loves writing about Christian music and worshiping the Lord. But in his uh, regular job that he does, he is uh, he's written some of the top songs, sold over 100 million albums, written songs like Don't Stop Believing, Faithfully, Open Arms, Amen. I know that somebody said Don't Stop Believing, Amen. And um, he plays with the band Journeys for over 37 years. They will be on tour starting, and they'll play before 4 million people this year in stadiums. And God uses John as a minister of light to go out into the dark world and let them know that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. So will you put your hands together for my husband and welcome him just before I get to minister the word. Minister John. Hallelujah. It's an honor to be here in the house of God. Um, i like to share humbly share a song that I wrote last year to bring an atmosphere of sweet Holy Spirit today so that we might have a breakthrough. How many people are here for surrender and praise? Huh? This song, I hope to call upon the Holy Spirit with this song of surrender and praise. James 4 verse and says, humble yourselves to the Lord and he will exalt you are you ready for exalting are, are you ready for a breakthrough worship with me now with my my song have your way with us all in this place, declaring our devotion, an open heaven in your name. Your love sustains, your healing exchange. At the heart of our worship, it's your will that we proclaim. The believers and the broken are ready for the change. Raise our hands, lift our voices, take our burden, break the chains. Lord, have your way with us, shine down your grace through us, become the presence that we adore. Father God, have your way with us. The true holy place for us, let your almighty soul 
spirits up in our souls. Ooh, Lord, have your way. Stir us up, oh Lord. Stir us up with your almighty storm. Oh, so sweet. A light to our path, a lamp to our feet. Your word is our salvation. To surrender is complete. Oh, bread of love, come fill our hearts. That we may feel your glory, you're the evidence unseen. Where believers and the broken are ready for the change. Raise our hands, lift our voices, take our burden, break these chains. Lord, have your way with us, shine down your grace through us. We call on your presence that we adore. Oh God, have you way with us? The true holy place for us. Let no man stop. Still it's up in our soul. We come to surrender. We pour out our praise. Believe in your promise from the cross to the grave, leading your image, name above all names. You are Father, and we are the claim. We come to surrender to pour out our praise. Leading your remembrance, we are the great, we are the great, oh Lord. We have the way with us, shine down the grace to us, we call your presence. Have your way with us, Lord. Have your way with us, Lord. Hallelujah. We come to surrender, to pour out our praise, believe in your promise, from the cross to the grave, made in your image. The name above all names, you are our Father, and we are the claim. We come to surrender, to pour out our praise, oh God, in your image. We are the clay, we are the clay, oh Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. You are welcome here. Have your way with us. Have your way. Have your way. Hallelujah. Amen. Receive Paula. I was going to say, you know, that's really what we're here for today. Because when God gets a surrendered life, he can do anything. And God's looking for someone this morning to be that world changer. And a world changer literally is defined by one whose life has such influence and impact that it shapes and it steers the course of history and creates cultural influence. You see, the church of Jesus Christ is the only legal entity in the earth that has true authorization to bring forth change. 
Well, there are many different systems that we look at and many different things that we think about and we look at like government and we look at education and we look at the financial markets and all the different institutions. Hollywood, which you live right by. They impact the world tremendously, but they are systems of the world. Only the blood-bought church of Jesus Christ can bring forth true transformation. And that's you. Look at somebody, say, you don't have a clue who you're sitting next to. Just tell them, say, you don't have a clue. Say, you're sitting next to God's blessing. So let me speak to you. First off, you look beautiful this morning. Your, your building is absolutely beautiful. And this is probably the best smelling church I've ever been to. So whatever you're cooking out there smells so good. <laughs> I'm honored to be with you today. Because I believe that I am here sent by God. I have a wonderful church. Um, they had phenomenal services, many souls that are saved. But I believe that my footsteps have been ordered by the Lord to be here because God has an assignment for someone's life. There's some barriers that are going to break today. Some limitations that are going to be removed today. And God's going to open something up because his house is important to him. Now, let me just start with you because it's hard to appreciate the glory in a person's life until you really know their story. So I didn't grow up in church. I never knew Jesus was the son of God. I, I didn't grow up um, knowing much about who he was or never went to a church, never read a Bible. I came from a very well-to-do family, but my father committed suicide when I was five years old. From 6 to 13, I was sexually and physically abused. My mother is very educated. She's got two masters and her doctorate. So while there was education and finances, there was a lot of dysfunction, a lot of generational curses. But God is going to set you free from any generational curse, anything from your mother's house, your father's house, because today I believe is a setup, a divine orchestration by God. And so when I'm 18 years old, I'm in college. I was a typical overachiever because I had that emptiness in my heart. Two and two didn't add up to four in my life because they told me I was the apple of my father's eye. But I never understood if you love me so much, why would you leave me? I couldn't understand his death. And so there was an emptiness on the inside, an empty love tank. And I looked for love in all the wrong places. I would pursue whatever it was that made made you love me made me accepted made me okay because you see in our christian walk we'll never be able to fulfill our destiny if we don't really know our identity your identity is not found in your bank account in your title in your position and what you do it's found in christ jesus and once you know who you are then you know what you can have and you know what you can do somebody say amen and so when i was 18 years old i went to a friend's house and his uncle looked me in my eyes and he says, I have the answers to your questions. And I got really defensive, like, what do you mean? He said, I've got the solution to your pain and problems. And I just looked at him very defensive. And he opened up this book, Pastor. It was a Bible. And when he opened it up, he began to tell me the plan of salvation. He began to show me that God had a plan for my life. And I want you to understand something. You see, because we will we'll get to all the rest. God has allowed me to do great things. Paula White Ministry, I don't even think we continue to count after 10 million souls were saved. I've probably seen over 20 to 30 million souls come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Built the second largest church in the nation without walls, 28,000 members. Launched a what would become a mini syndication, Paula White Media Ministries, which would reach billions of people across the world. I'll talk to you about that today. Preached in over a hundred nations. Had built orphanages and schools all over, created companies and businesses. God has set me in high places to be able to advise to some of the most influential people in the earth, whether it's in our White House, our presidents, or kings all over the world. 